Hello everyone, my name is Cyprien Enfi Awua and with me here today is my friend Frank Kwekuba Frank Kwekuba, Frank, uh, you're welcome Thank you uh, I've noticed that you sometimes have this program in schools, in universities, uh, uh, secondary schools and recently I think uh, you were with some student groups uh, are talking about uh, mental life education. So quickly, I, I want to share. Uh, I want you to share with us uh, what exactly is is this mental life education? What is okay? What is, well, mental life education is a program that focuses on the mental life. Okay. And then you know we have different kinds of life that we live. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we have spiritual life. We also have mental life, the life we live in our mind. Mm -hmm. And then we have overt life. Overt life. Yeah. Now by overt life, what is that like? I mean behavioral life, the life that we live in terms of our behavior. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, how is mental life connected? How is it connected to, to the Word of God? Well, the Mental Life Education Program is all about how to use the Word of God to develop quality mental life. And so it is the, the, the whole emphasis on, is on the Word of God. Uh, because uh, through the Word of God, we can develop quality mental life. And that is the essence of the Mental Life Education. Okay, good. So if... If I understand what you are saying, then it means that um, when you go to schools, you don't just go and tell them, well, I'm coming to teach you the word of God. You just tell them that you are coming to share with them about mental life. Exactly. But at the end of the day, everything you are sharing is about God's word. Yeah. Wonderful. So how do you do that? You know, it even makes it very simple in sharing the, the gospel and the other word of God with, with students, whether they are believers or not. You know, when we go there, we talk about how fear, worry, anxiety, self-condemnation, guilt affect the mind, affect the body, affect the brain. And we've done quite a lot of, a lot of research to back it up. And so we look at how you know, guilt, self-condemnation affects the brain, affects the flow of oxygen to the brain, affects the blood, and affects the mind, affects our happiness. And when students begin to know that, and then we begin to provide them solution from the Word of God, then easily they are able to accept the Word of God, and then they are able to develop quality mental life from the Word of God that they learn. Wow. So, um... In this world where some people think that solution to man's problem is, is about um, change of environment. Yeah. I've seen friends that, you know, talk so much about their environment and how they want to change their mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. And uh, some of them it's like they think that if, if they change the environment, uh, they will have a quality mental life. Now, can somebody live in an environment where there is constant kidnapping, an environment where um, it's like there is no job, mm -hmm environment that you struggle to have money to take care of your health mm -hmm. can you have a quality mental life in the midst of such an environment oh yeah you you realize that uh, as i said in my earlier submission uh, the life that we live inside our mind is entirely a different life and sometimes we think that if we live in a perfect environment where there are no problems, 
then we can have quality mental life. But this is not true. Hmm. It is only the word of God that can give us quality mental life. Okay. And if I say quality mental life, I mean how you can use the word of God to overcome worry, to, over, to, to develop quality thinking, to overcome anxiety, fear, bitterness, malice, jealousy, and all those things that come into our mind. Of course, the pressures of life in an environment where kidnapping and, and problems here and there come, they have effects on our mind. Mm. We cannot deny that fact. Mm. They have effect, a negative effect, negative pressure on the mind. Mm -hmm. But you can also learn how to use the word of God to overcome those effects on the mind mm. so that your mind will be free from worry, will be free from anxiety, will be free from bitterness, will be free from those things in the midst of the problems that you're in. So you can have uh, an imperfect environment, a, a, an environment full of problems and other stuff, and develop a quality mental life where you'll be able to stabilize your happiness and peace of mind. Mm. Wow, wow. So it, it means that when you go to these campuses, yeah. you don't go and then you say, well, hey, I'm coming to teach you the Bible. No, you don't do that. No, but you go and you tell them, uh, I'm going to share with you how to have a quality mental life. Yes. But at the end of the day, everything you end up sharing is all about God's way. Exactly. Fantastic. You know, the, so, the recent uh, ones that we did mm -hmm. at the University of Cape Coast, yeah. by, we were invited by the Catholic group. Okay. And, you know, they, they were full of Catholics. Okay. Quite a number of people. Mm. And the presentation was on uh, the plan of God for the mind. Okay. So I, since they believe in the existence of God, mm. we, we were able to explore the plan of God for the mind. Mm. So God has a plan for everybody's mind. Everybody in this world, God has a plan for your mind. And it's a plan of God that we all develop quality mental life through His Word. Through His Word. Yeah. Uh, so, is it possible for one to have a quality mental life? Mm -hmm. independent of God's word? No. Absolutely no. There's no human being on this earth who can develop absolute quality mental life without the word of God. Apart from God's word, it's Apart impossible. from, it is impossible. Because, you know, I, when I mm. went even to the university, I met people who have background in psychology and philosophy, and then they couldn't defeat worry with their principles in psychology. Mm. They couldn't overcome fear with their principles in psychology and philosophy. Mm. They couldn't overcome the worry, the anxiety, the guilt, the self-condemnation with those principles. But at the moment, we introduce to them how through Jesus Christ, God has forgiven their sins. That information, that knowledge was able to overcome the guilt and then the self-condemnation in their mind. So, so, so the Bible is, is a higher psychology. Exactly. It is a higher psychological book. Exactly. You know, Suki, Suki uh, is, is the uh, Greek form of the soul. Yes, that, yeah. It is the, it is the soul or Suki that we call psyche. Exactly. So we have psychology, yeah. the study of the soul. Yeah. The study of okay. the human mind. Yeah. So, the 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 perfect book to deal with the human soul is God's word. It's God's word. Yeah. So the human psychology that we study, yeah, has a limit. It has a lot of limits. I just wish that psychologists, I mean, we just learn God's word and then know the proper way of you know dealing with you know uh, uh, individuals that come to them. Exactly. Probably they, they may not be aware of it. So as we are doing this program, mm. some of these psychologists might come into contact with that. And when they realize how the word of God is able to help people overcome fear, worry, anxiety, help, help them to develop quality thinking life, help them to develop quality decisions and overcome certain addiction and behavior. Mm. When they learn that, probably they will come to acknowledge that. Good. So... Uh... Uh, I know, I know. Uh, psychology uh, basically always 
try to understand one's background and then try to see the cause of a lot of things then they try to now uh, suggest what you know uh, they might think what they think you know might help yeah. uh, but, but it seems that um, God's word doesn't deal with the causes God yeah. is not interested in causes why why you are not uh, why this happened why this happened God is interested in, in the solution yeah the solution yeah you see um, psychology uh, we are not relegating the, the, the good aspect of psychology mm. but it has limitations mm. and they will tell you you are having this problem because of that and because of that mm. but when we pick the Bible mm. somebody going through self-condemnation somebody going through uh, you know worry somebody going through guilt mm. of course we learn the effect of the guilt on the mind mm. the effect of the guilt on the body mm. because in the field of uh, medicine we are what we call psychosomatics mm. how our thinking affects the body so we we delve into that and then when we have dealt into that then we provide you the information from the word of god the solution information and when we did that i remember uh, you know a lady who had postpartum depression mm. for so many a month we went there and then through that now, through the word of god you know, I, I i enjoy hearing you know, all these words what did you see postpartum depression <laughs> postpartum depression it means that after giving birth you go through the depression <laughs> okay uh, okay so the all postpartum right. after giving birth you go through depression okay and then she she couldn't she couldn't live she felt she she does not even exist okay and then she it was it was quite a number of things she you know went to the hospital we tried giving her a lot of uh, antidepressant it didn't work out work. so you know somebody introduced me to her and then we went there and then through the word of god she was able to recover from postpartum depression wow. and then she gave birth to the second born and she never experienced that again mm, mm, mm. that's 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 the power of the word. Yeah. No wonder the Bible says that the word of God is powerful, alive and yeah, powerful, powerful yeah. sharper than any Need two edges so yeah. piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it yeah. is the critic critical of the thoughts, thoughts and, and intents of the heart. Yeah. I mean, thank God. Yeah. Uh, we praise God for uh, blessing us with, I mean, with his word. Yeah. So quickly, if somebody is watching you right now, somebody in the house who... Um, uh, you may have lost a loved one. You may have lost lost. I mean, a son. You may have lost a daughter. You may have lost uh, um, a husband or wife. You may have lost your job. Now, uh, Frank is going to share with you um, um, this last message. So, Frank, if yeah. somebody is going through such an experience, for example, somebody, I mean, because of this coronavirus, yeah. lost his or her job, and it's been long and things, you know, um, uh, have been bad for, for such a person. Now, what are you going to tell such a person who has lost a loved one and the the he or she keeps thinking about the person or somebody who has lost a job somebody uh who is sick and the health is not even getting better it's getting worse and worse how what are you going to tell the person well uh, to the sick person mm. you realize that your thinking has effects on your body your thinking can even have a negative effect on your health and so mental life education is meant for you and when you improve upon the quality of your mental life your health will also improve if you're on medication it will improve upon how you know the medication can even have a very good effect to help you heal quickly the word of god can reform can help improve upon our health the word of god can help us recover from our you know conditions that health conditions that might not be good for us mm. i'm not saying that uh, the word of god 
you don't have to take medication. No. I'm saying that because the word of God has good effect on the mind, it is also going to improve upon your immune system. And there are, there are, there are facts, there are, there are things that have been done to prove that. Secondly, those of us going through, uh, you know, other uh, problems, have, having lost loved ones, and the rest. Mental life education is saying that in order to be a happy person, you need the, to learn how you can use the word of God to improve upon the quality of your mental life. Then you can maintain your happiness and peace of mind. Mm. Mm. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah. And then there are a lot of benefits, you know, mm. developing the quality mental life through the word of God will help you develop, you know, uh, uh, a, a very good uh, mental health. It will also help you, you know, overcome emotional problems, worry, anxiety, fear. Mm. It will help you have, develop the capacity for self-leadership. Mm. It will also help you develop the capacity for making good decisions. It will help you to, to develop what? Capacity for self-leadership. Capacity for self-leadership. Okay, and what? And, and capacity for good decisions. Good decisions. Yes. Good. So if, if I understand what you're saying, so it was because of God's word that David yeah. and, and, and Solomon and um, uh, all those guys, yeah. Paul, yeah. Moses, yeah. were able to make all those tough and good decisions exactly. as leaders. Exactly. Wonderful. And, and let me say this. You see, the, the Word of God actually uh, does a lot of good on the brain. Mm. And when it is changing the, the neural patterns of the brain, mm. as we listen to the Word of God and apply the Word of God, it does a lot of change on the neural part of the brain. Mm. And when it is doing that, it helps us in making good decisions. Mm. It helps us in making quality decisions. Quality decisions. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And then it helps us to overcome every difficulties of life. Every difficulties of life. Yeah. That is what the Word of God is able to do yeah. in our lives. Yeah, but the Word must have impact on the mind first. Okay. The it Word must have so, impact on the mind first. So, so this, this works because the brain is physical. Yes. And the soul is spiritual. Yes. But then for the soul to have an impact on the brain, which is physical, yeah. the brain itself must be stable. Yeah. And since it cannot be stable by itself, there must be a superior power. Exactly. To stable the, the, the soul. Yeah. The, the, and that superior power is God's word. Yeah. So it imparts the soul. Then the soul is then... To impact the, 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 the brain. The brain. Yeah. 